Welcome. I just wanted to say welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> we are here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will we, we will endeavor to, forget, oh, oh, to get rid oh. of it and replace it with, with this right here. We'll replace it with this right, right. here. Amen. That's right, because all glory, all glory is not to government, all glory to God. You just listened to far-right political commentator Jack Posobiec say the quiet part loud. He intends to overthrow and replace democracy. Now, you couldn't really make out what he was holding up, but it appears that that was a crucifix, which indicates that he has a desire for a Christian nationalist theocracy. Now, look, one could dismiss this as him just being facetious based on the laughs that he got from Steve Bannon, but that's only if you watched half of the clip. As he goes on, in the second half, it becomes pretty obvious that his tone changed and he was being dead serious. But we didn't really need this confirmation from him because Trump allies have been pretty open about the fact that they want to turn America into a Christian nationalist country. In fact, just this week, we got a report from Politico detailing plans to, quote, infuse Christian nationalism into Trump's second administration. Quote, spearheading the effort is Russell Vaught, who served as Trump's director of the Office of Management and Budget during his first term and has remained close to him. Vaught, who is frequently cited as a potential chief of staff in a second Trump White House, is president of the Center for Renewing America think tank, a leading group in a conservative consortium preparing for a second Trump term. One document drafted by CRA staff and fellows includes a list of top priorities for CRA in a second term. Christian nationalism is one of the bullet points. Others include invoking the Insurrection Act on day one to quash protests and and refusing to spend authorized congressional funds on unwanted projects, a practice banned by lawmakers in the Nixon era. Now, for those unaware, Christian nationalism is inherently incompatible with democracy because it supposes that God is above government. And since we have a First Amendment that explicitly separates church and state, you wouldn't be able to infuse Christian nationalism into government without violating the U.S. Constitution. But don't take it from me, because we just heard it straight from the horse's mouth. All glory, all glory is not to government, all glory to God. So take from that what you will. Now, the question is, how would Trump's allies exactly do what they want to do? How would they specifically infuse Christian nationalism into government? I mean, aren't there supposed to be checks and balances to prevent that sort of abuse of power? And the answer is yes and no, right? Yes, checks and balances still do exist, technically, but dozens of conservative organizations have come together to form a plan known as Project 2025 that aims to do away with the remaining checks and balances that could theoretically hold Trump accountable if he chooses to abuse power. Now, the first step of Project 2025 is to completely and utterly dismantle the administrative state by purging every single bureaucrat who's not completely loyal to Donald Trump. Now, this process is actually already underway because there's been reports that Trump allies are currently interviewing potential loyalists to head top agencies. Now, this is significant because if these agencies actually do become rubber stamps for Trump, all of his checks in the executive branch are then gone. Remember, he couldn't steal the election in 2020 because department heads defied him and also threatened to resign en masse. But he is immediately addressing this problem by just cleaning house and stacking these agencies with loyal NPCs. Now, you could argue that there are other checks, such as Congress and the judiciary, and you'd be correct. But I mean, he's already stacked the judiciary. He has a 6-3 majority on the Supreme Court, half of Congress is already comprised of fascist extremists as it is now. So the institutional checks that once protected us from a president with dictatorial ambitions are quickly eroding. And they plan to kind of give all these checks and balances the final death blow if he gets elected and they bring Project 2025 to fruition. But the document obtained by Politico doesn't actually name specific Christian nationalist policies that Trump allies want to infuse in his second administration, but we don't really need to see the document because we already know what they're planning to do thanks to Project 2025. And Brian Tannehill of Dame Magazine has a detailed write-up about the 900-page master plan, and one paragraph in particular includes a wish list of unconstitutional socially conservative policies, followed by details about how they plan to enact these policies. It reads, quote, Pornography manifested today in omnipresent propagation of transgender ideology and sexualization of children, for instance, 
is not a political Gordian knot inextricably binding up disparate claims about free speech, property rights, sexual liberation, and child welfare. It has no claim to First Amendment protection. Its purveyors are child predators and misogynistic exploiters of women. Their product is as addictive as any illicit drug and as psychologically destructive as any crime. Pornography should be outlawed. The people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned. Educators and public librarians who purvey it should be classed as registered sex offenders, and telecommunications and technology firms that facilitate its spread should be shuttered. Now, you don't really have to unpack that paragraph too much to know what to expect, because it's pretty obvious. In the very first sentence, they say that transgender people are tantamount to porn. Now, they also say they want to ban porn and jail anyone who disseminates said porn, meaning that queer people will no longer be allowed to exist publicly under these new rules that they want to enact. And anyone who is an ally for queer people and defends them, they'll be jailed as well. It's, uh, it's pretty brazen, right? Now, if you think I'm being hyperbolic, if they designate LGBTQ plus people as porn and simultaneously outlaw porn, what exactly else does that mean, right? And they say the penalty should be imprisonment. So it, it's pretty obvious this is authoritarianism. These are laws that are more harsh than Russia's anti-LGBTQ plus propaganda laws. We're actually looking at laws more comparable to countries like Saudi Arabia, for example. And they make it pretty clear that free speech rights don't apply to LGBTQ plus quote criminals who they also deem as child predators. Now, you might say that regardless of how they designate queer people, we still have constitutional protections. And that's true. But who's going to stop them from violating the Constitution and abusing power if most of the people in government are all puppets for Donald Trump? That's why they're doing the whole purge first and foremost, right? That's why claims about democracy being overthrown need to be taken seriously. Project 2025 isn't some fringe document being constructed by shitposting podcast hosts on the right. It is devised by multiple influential right-wing organizations. In fact, when I say multiple, that kind of undersells it by 50 right-wing organizations and written by very powerful people who've been in government before and will likely return to government again if Trump gets a second turn. And that's the case with Vought as well. He's likely going to be in the White House if Trump gets elected. But I want to get back to him because Politico has even more details about him and his allies. Quote, Vought has a close affiliation with Christian nationalist William Wolf, a former Trump administration official who has advocated for overturning same-sex marriage, ending abortion, and reducing access to contraceptives. Vought, who declined to comment, is advising Project 2025, a governing agenda that would usher in one of the most conservative executive branches in modern American history. The effort is made up of a constellation of conservative groups groups run by Trump allies who've constructed a detailed plan to dismantle or overhaul key agencies in a second term. Among other principles, the project's mandate for leadership states that freedom is defined by God, not man. So the flavor of authoritarianism being pushed by Project 2025 is Christian nationalism, and the organization that's leading the charge here is the highly influential Heritage Foundation, who's gotten a lot more open lately about the freedoms that they want to take away from Americans. In fact, they tweeted this themselves, quote, conservatives have to lead the way in restoring sex to its true purpose and ending recreational sex and senseless use of birth control pills. So let's be really clear here. Queer and marginalized people aren't going to be the only ones affected by Project 2025. Everyone is going to be affected by it. They want to turn America into the Christian equivalent of Saudi Arabia, and doing that necessitates an end to our current democratic regime. Now, it's still entirely possible that they don't get to do what they want. They don't enact their entire agenda. Perhaps there's infighting and they butt heads. I don't know. But when they're laying out their authoritarian ambitions, like in plain sight for all of us to see, I think that it would be foolish to not take them seriously, to not take them at their word. This is dangerous. They want to end democracy. And if we don't listen to them, we only have ourselves to blame in the end.